Bill O'Reilly here. Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. This is happening across our nation. President Trump threatens to deploy the military on American soil to quell the protests. Joe Biden promises to end racism if he's elected. The founder of the Black Entertainment Television Network calls for $14 trillion in reparations. Gun sales nearly double in May. George Floyd had narcotics in his system when he was killed at the hands of the police. Also ahead, what about those reparations? Fair? But first, the president demanding governors stop violent protesters, saying, quote, they must deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. If a city or state refuses to take actions necessary to defend life, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem, unquote. But some say using troops domestically is unconstitutional. Joe Biden vowing to abolish institutional racism if he wins the election in November. The former vice president calling for the creation of a new oversight body at the Department of Justice to investigate police brutality. About 1,000 people are killed by law enforcement each year, nearly all of them during the commission of a crime. 31% are African American. Of course, Mr. Biden was vice president for eight years with little to show on race. Black businessman Robert Johnson asking for $14 trillion in racial reparations. The 74-year-old believes, quote, now is the time to go big and create the biggest affirmative action program of all time, unquote. Polls show about 60% of the public oppose cash payments based on race. Less than a third support the idea. More on this in my upcoming message of the day. Firearm sales up 80% in May compared to the same period last year. Half of all Americans now report living in a home with a gun. The FBI conducting more than 10 million background checks since the virus outbreak began in March the highest number since the 9-11 terror attack. The New York Times reporting George Floyd had fentanyl and methamphetamine in his system when he died in Minneapolis. I do not expect that will change the third-degree murder charge against police officer Derek Chauvin. In a moment, should the taxpayer give trillions to African Americans? Right back with it. Bill O'Reilly here with a big announcement. I am back on television. Please join me weeknights at 8 p.m. Eastern for the No Spin News on The First TV. 2020 will go down as one of the most important years in American history. Our leaders are struggling, the media totally out of control. Pundits parade from channel to channel with nothing but speculation and BS. Now more than ever, you need facts, not spin. Change the channel on the fake news. Please join me, Bill O'Reilly, over at The First TV. The First is a new kind of network with fresh ideas and bold opinions, and it's available for free on your computer, smart TV, even on your phone. At The First, you can watch me, Bill O'Reilly, and the No Spin News, and so much more. Please go to thefirsttv.com. No cost, no trials, no spin. That's thefirsttv.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, the sins of the past. One of the justifications for the current racial protests is that America was once a slave nation. And because of that, the country, including the taxpayers, should give blacks so-called reparations. As just reported, African-American billionaire Robert Johnson calling for $14 trillion in reparations. Mr. Johnson made history as the country's first black billionaire after selling his BET network to Viacom in 2001. Johnson goes on to say, quote, Wealth transfer is what's needed. Think about this. Since 200-plus years or so of slavery, labor taken with no compensation— is a wealth transfer. 
denial of access to education, which is a primary driver of accumulation of income and wealth, is a wealth transfer. The problem with that quote is that there is no denial of education in contemporary America. Yes, there is bad education, but that's the fault of politicians, not the taxpayer. Let's look at some stats. Black Americans comprise about 12% of the population, 38 million people. That number includes 4 million black immigrants from places like Africa and the Caribbean. 14 trillion for the country's 38 million African Americans would be 368,421 dollars per person. 368,000. And that kind of reparation payment, even spread over years, would badly damage America's economy. We simply do not have enough tax money to come close to paying that. And then there is fairness. What about reparations for other groups injured in the past, such as Native Americans? If you read my upcoming book, Killing Crazy Horse, you will vividly see the suffering of the Indians. And how about the descendants of the 360,000 Union soldiers killed in the Civil War? Are they entitled to compensation? Polls say... More than 60% of Americans reject reparations. Only about a third support the payments. But clearly, our country should stop the corruption and design a superior public school system. As I wrote in a column posted on BillOReilly.com, education is the key to improved economic status. If you cannot read well, write cursive, speak the language, it doesn't matter what color you are. You're not going to succeed on a large scale in the United States. So, let's teach the children well and get past this skin color business, which is tearing the nation apart. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by actually writing it. For more news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com for honest pandemic and protest coverage. In a moment, something you might not know. Reopening America safely is everyone's responsibility, and no one believes that more than our friends at Real Time Products. In fact, they're helping businesses and organizations by giving away a free automatic dispenser with a purchase of two gallons of real-time hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer dispensers are available in wall mount, floor stand, or countertop, so customers, employees, parishioners, anyone can dispense the sanitizer safely. Real-time hand sanitizer contains 70% alcohol, and you'll never need another hand sanitizer supplier. Real-time hand sanitizer formulated and packaged in the USA. To claim your free hand sanitizer dispenser, please go to GetSanitizerNow.com. Don't assume a business or organization you frequent doesn't care. They're probably having trouble getting sanitizer. So spread the word that Real-Time has dispensers and gallons of sanitizer available right now. Do your part. GetSanitizerNow.com. GetSanitizerNow.com. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. The USA is echoing protests that happened in other countries. 31 years ago this week, Chinese students marched through the streets of Beijing demanding basic human rights like free speech and open markets. The protests lasted months, ending in a brutal communist crackdown on its own citizenry. Here's the story of Tiananmen Square and the massacre there. April 1989. The death of a popular political reformer triggers a wave of protests throughout China. By mid-May, 100,000 students and workers fill Tiananmen Square in Beijing, directly in front of the mausoleum of Mao Zedong. 250,000 Chinese troops 
confront the demonstrators, but fail to stop the uprising. By the end of May, again 31 years ago, there are one million protesters in Tiananmen Square. The crisis escalated until the early hours of June 4th, when Chinese troops attacked the square from every direction, soldiers given permission to shoot civilians, armored tanks smashing into the protesters who refused to leave. Some footage managed to reach the West, including the video of Tank Man, a protester who famously faced down the business end of a tank armed with nothing but his briefcase. The Chinese government would not release casualty figures. Today, military force, still a big part of the Chinese communist playbook, especially now in Hong Kong. Beijing currently trying to seize control of the, quote, special region, pushing laws prohibiting treason, secession, subversion. It would even allow the government to place security police around the city. But you cannot Google that inside China. The Great Firewall blocks hundreds of thousands of key words on all search engines. Communist Party employs 30,000 web police recording emails, chats, everything. Say something the government doesn't like, get ready for a knock on the door and worse. Back after this. A former White House economist says there's a 100% chance of a recession and predicts 1 million jobs will be lost in April. So many Americans are moving to physical gold and silver as a recession-proof safe haven for their retirement. American Hartford Gold Group is a trusted leader in gold and silver, and they make it simple and easy to get started. They're family-owned and have an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Very important. Until you hold a precious metal in your hand, you'll never fully know the experience of being in control of your own retirement. If you are listening to me right now, the American Hartford Gold Group is offering new clients up to $500 in free silver. All you have to do is give them a call, 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text SILVER. Two six five five three two. Please call the American Hartford Gold Group now, 877-444-4653 or text SILVER two six five five three two. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. <laughs> 